here we go. I'm gonna answer 35 of my favorite and the best questions from your guys' 1500 comments on Instagram. Let's go. All right, when you were young, did you ever think you'd become this famous and such a good scooter rider? Um, when I started, the goal was, there was no goal. I was just having fun with my friends at the skate park and seeing how far we could push it. Um, but after a couple years of riding, I saw the opportunity to become very good at it. So I set a goal to be the best and a couple years later, I was able to achieve that and I've been able to uh, keep it up and uh, keep pushing myself in the sport to new levels all the time. Okay, what was your hardest part in your scooting career? I'm not sure what, what was your hardest part, but I'm going to change it like what is the hardest thing about being a pro scooter rider? I think it, I mean, just as being me, I have to travel a lot or I get to travel a lot and I uh, have to be places like within a day across the world, so it's kind of hard getting on time, different time zones and having to wake up and go to sleep for like three hours a day and whatever. So I mean that's the hardest part but it's the most fun part because I get to see everybody around the world in just a few days and I get to go everywhere so that's a pretty cool job. Okay, how did you feel when you came the best in the world for the first time? Um, I felt pretty, uh, I guess pretty good because I rode probably since I was 14 to 16 um, and I won every single contest that I entered for a while, um, like in France and Switzerland and all the different big events around the world. Um, but there was no world championships during when I was 14 to 16, so it was, I was like, I guess you could say I was one of the better riders in the world, but there's no way to prove that I was the best. So when the world championships came around, it's cool to be called the best in the world and actually have a contest to back it up. All right, next one, are you a Christian? Yes. Are you ever going to come back to Australia, particularly Sydney? Yes, I go about, I try to go like every three months. I just like going back there and it's kind of like California, it's just on the other side of the world. So yeah, I come back every few months and I get to ride with you guys there. Alright, next one, I got, what was your favorite childhood memory? Um, I don't think there's one in particular from uh, when I was a little kid. So like, when I was a teenager, I did every everything I could every day. I went out and pushed myself and see how far I could push the envelope in any sport I tried with my brother and a lot of my friends and yeah there's not one memory in particular but my childhood was pretty awesome. Okay next question is from Jason Zimmerman that is Cole Zimmerman's dad. Uh, Cole rides for me on the dream team and the first question is what is your advice to continue to progress as a scooter rider? I believe it's just go out and push yourself see how far you can take your tricks, take your riding, go higher, faster, to see what you can pull off at the skate park. And then uh, just believe in yourself because anything's possible. Um, he's got two more questions. Okay, second question is, what country that you have visited do you think is the most passionate about scootering? I don't think there's one in particular because everywhere is different, but I think uh, all the countries with scootering in it, every single kid that rides is just as passionate as I am or anybody else that rides. I mean, it doesn't matter where you live, you're still passionate about riding. Um, third one is what are your dreams for the sport of scootering? Sport of scootering has grown a lot in 10 years like we've got it pretty far as in just a short period of time compared to skateboarding and BMX. I believe it's because we have YouTube and all the social media sites and it's a lot easier for us to move up the ladder faster because how fast we can promote stuff and meet people at skate parks and do contests and events like that. Um, I think a cool thing would be, I mean obviously everybody wants it in the X Games, I don't think that that's like, that's not the most important thing, but that'd be very cool for the sport. Um, we're going to probably be in Simple Session next year, and um, a lot of the Feast events, so that's pretty big, and that has more spectators than the X Games, so that's pretty big for scootering, and then uh, Nitro does a lot for the sport too, like Ryan Williams gets seen by a lot of people every single day and he promotes scootering very well to the new people that aren't in the sport yet. I think uh, I'd like to see a lot more contests, a lot more beginner events because that's what pushes the sport forward and pushes the level of riding higher because the little kids will come up in five years and be better than we are now. Views on drugs and alcohol, have you ever tried any? No, I've never tried any and my views would be I don't think they're that good for you, they just kind of like take away from life instead of add it, so I encourage you probably not to try it. I just don't think it's that good for you and life's good enough by itself. On our coder parts coming out, the ones that you posted sneak peeks of and deleted them. Um, I've been working on coder parts for a long time and they hopefully should be out 
um, after the new year, so like early 2017. So that should be pretty cool, and you guys should see some sneak peeks pretty soon. Chris Ferris, I believe this is the real Chris Ferris, says, where do you find your motivation or what do you believe in? Um, let's see, I find my motivation from pushing myself and just, I don't know, there's no, I just want to get better every day and um, what do I believe in? I believe in God, that's about it. What is your life goal? Hmm, I have a lot of goals, but life goal, I just like um, make people happy, that's about it, inspiring people, it's pretty cool and I get to do it every day. What coffee do you drink? As you guys see from my Snapchats, I go to Starbucks a lot just because I like it, and I usually get um, caramelized coffee with half and half. Next one, how long did it take you to learn a backflip? Um, first, I learned a backflip on a trampoline when I was about five years old, and then I learned it on flat ground when I was about 10, then halfway through when I was 10, I learned it on rollerblades at skate park, and about a month later after that, I learned it on a scooter onto a crash pad, and then I landed it second try after trying it to concrete. So uh, it took a while, but only about two days trying it on a scooter. Let's see, what was it like to be in the Nitro Games? I think the Nitro Games was a really good thing for scootering and it was really cool to be able to ride with Ryan, Jordan, Caper, and Corey at the same event in front of 35,000 people. So I think it's a really awesome thing for the sport and it's really cool to put on a show for everybody. All right, it says, would you naturally thought about the kickless rewind trick if your mighty god Martin Kimball didn't invent it first, Dakota should pick this one. <laughs> I think somebody would have came up with it. I don't know if I would have came up with it. Um, but definitely thanks Martin Kimball for inventing the trick. It definitely pushed my riding to another level and hopefully we can invent some more to keep pushing scootering farther. And uh, thanks for the awesome comment. Um, next one, my favorite car. Um, as you guys know, I really like cars and I enjoy driving cars um, all around the world. And my top three favorite cars probably of all time would be uh, Ferrari F40, um, Ferrari, La Ferrari, Pagani Waira, and then a car that would be an awesome thing to have in America would be R34 Skyline GTR, just because you cannot get it until the next like four or five years. So if I can get one of those before then, that'd be very cool. And that's one of my uh, next cars in the next couple of years. Um, then I also like classic Porsches. Um, I'm hopefully going to build an RWB Porsche in the next year or two. All right, greatest place you accidentally ended up at. Um, the craziest place, probably Stonehenge. We were driving to a contest one day with like a ton of people piling onto a car and just on the side of the road, we just somehow found Stonehenge and stopped and had a pretty fun time there and then uh, it's just pretty crazy seeing all the pictures and then just ending up driving past it in the middle of nowhere so that's pretty awesome. Next one is why do you wear knee pads when you ride? I've always worn knee pads because I've always had other things to do like the next day or the next couple days always in my schedule so I wear knee pads because it gives me confidence to do bigger tricks and it allows me to slide out when I'm trying new things. So, I mean, if you have knee pads, you obviously can try bigger tricks because you don't, you're not as scared to fall as if you weren't near knee pads. Okay, what's your favorite place on earth? I really enjoy California because it's the best of everything. Like, you have everything within a couple hours distance. Um, I really like Sydney, Australia, and Monaco. So that's three places I could pick out of all the world. Favorite place to ride? Favorite place to ride, as in like a skate park. My favorite skate park is Zone 74 in Scotland. It's in East Kilbride. I really like it just because of the flow around the skate park and you can do a lot of cool lines and tricks and just keep going forever and you never run out of speed. While traveling the globe, do you eat McDonald's in every country that you visit and how often? Okay, um, I like McDonald's but not that much. And the only reason we eat McDonald's a lot is because all the events we finish are about eight and everything in Europe and other places closes at around six. So when we go to eat dinner, there's nowhere open. So we just end up resorting to McDonald's and uh, trying to get the most nutrition out of that place as we can. <laughs> Why do you think people say you have no style? Um, I believe style is a personal preference. So, I mean, I couldn't tell you that your style is bad because I could think something totally different. So it's just how you think someone's riding look. It doesn't really matter. Will you play a game of Scoot against Jordan Clark? Yes, um, I will again, and I have played him three times, and I've won all of them. How much training did it take to become the best? I rode for about 
four years or five years until I started winning like every pro event. So I mean it's a lot of probably four to eight hours a day of riding. Kept learning tricks all the time, got to learn a lot of like the world's first tricks. So it's cool, but it's a lot of hard work and if you want to accomplish something it obviously takes a lot of training, a lot of trying and falling, getting up and trying to push yourself and then now we're here, so pretty cool. What do you think of people calling scooters gay? Usually the people that are calling scooters gay cannot scooter and are probably somebody that's jealous of how popular scootering is because I think it is the most popular action sport as of today, um, as like a population goes. So I mean, they're just jealous of how big scootering has gotten, how big it is getting, so that's about it. What motivated you to start Code Inc? I started Code Inc because I like controlling a lot of things myself. I don't really like being told what to do. Um, so having my own company, I can go wherever I want and do whatever I want and uh, do the events I want to do instead of other people picking which ones I get to do. So it's uh, best of everything for me. And we have new parts coming out and obviously we do all the clothes and stuff which do very well. Uh, so it should be a fun year in 2017 to see what products we come out with. Would you ever want to live in Australia? I spend a lot of time in Australia so I'd probably not really want to live there for a long period of time but I could go like three months at a time and come back and but I get to travel a lot of places so I'd always uh, get there anyways. When were you born? I was born March 19th 1996 in Saginaw, Michigan. What would you say is your greatest achievement in life? I don't believe I've achieved what I want at all. So I mean, up till today, it's just inspiring people to uh, believe in themselves and anything's possible. So that's as of today, but I'll keep going and see what I can accomplish in this life. What advice would you have for new riders? I would say just go have fun on your scooter and make sure you have the right bar height and bar width, and then it'll make it a lot easier to control your scooter and just mainly go have fun and push yourself and see how far you can take it. Did you used to get any hate? Well, being good at anything, you get hated on because everybody's jealous, not just being me, but like if you're Michael Phelps or Lewis Hamilton or Justin Bieber, it doesn't matter. If you're good at something, people always try to tear you down, but usually if they're trying to tear you down, they're lower than you, so you're at a higher level. So no matter what, keep your head up, keep going. All right, thanks guys to everybody that commented and asked me all the questions. They're really cool and I enjoy reading them all. If you guys ever comment on my Instagram, I see all of them, so don't think I ever don't see them and I try to respond to as many as I can. Thanks for your guys' support all the time. I'll try and make some new videos every once in a while. I'm just pretty busy, but I'll try and keep them up on YouTube and let you guys stay updated with what I'm doing. I got a question. Is Hunter really that good at bottle flips?